This guy only does catch bombs, touchdowns everywhere. Eight touchdowns what? in his last six games for one of the best teams in the NFL right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Gabe Davis. Yay! Yeah. 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 I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show. What's up, Gabe? What, so all, all you do, I guess, is just catch bombs, right? Like the, your 98-yarder seems like something that we never get to see. Ha like if I was there in person, like, man, I don't know if I've ever – like this is awesome, an NFL game for this to actually happen. How did it feel to actually connect and score on this one? I mean, first, uh, you got to shout out Doris, and you got to shout out the old line being able to give Josh the time, but then Doris just having the guts to call that play on the on yeah. the two-yard line. I mean, that's pretty crazy. But I know when I was running, I was literally talking about this last night. When I was running, I'm just thinking, holy shit, what am I doing right now? Just <laughs> running this, you know, having a 98-yard touchdown. Am I running I'm gassers running. right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get to the sideline, I'm gassed. But it was like it was a great um, great play, and, I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was something I feel like I really needed, too. Um, this season. I seen a report on the internet, which means it could have been a meme or a gif or anything like that, that said you have eight touchdowns in the last six games or something like that, and it averages either 40 yards or 60 yards. I don't remember the exact on that. Have you and Josh Allen chatted about that? Is there something that has changed, or you just found a connection in the right plays for you to kind of exploit defenses in a massive way? It, you are electrifying, Gabe. Is there a conversation you and Josh have, or how's that all start, you think? I mean, I just feel like it's been, you know, us being together for the past three years, uh, building that chemistry and building that trust. Um, I know it's something that I'm uh, I'm big on, and I know when the ball's in the air, I got to be able to make it happen. And, and no 17's got a strong arm, and he can – and I feel like that's his favorite thing to do is throw deep balls. So if I can get down there and, um, and make it happen for him, you know, it'll continue to keep going. Now, you play the Hell Chiefs yeah. this week. Does that change anything for you guys, like your prep? I know it's easy to say, no, nah, it's just another week. It's just another game. This is what we do. But there has to be, like, an added sense of urgency, I would imagine, around there. Yeah, of course. I mean, in the past three years, uh, with the history is, uh, of, with us and the Chiefs, you know, going head to head, I mean, it, it, it's electric, it's big, it's big time. And, you know, we're excited for this week. Again, like you said, you got to think of it as um, it's the biggest week because it's the next week. So, and that's the mindset we try to go into it. Seems like you guys have that mindset, like championship mindset. But all the comments are from the internet. And, Gabe, listen, we live in the internet, and there's a lot of upside on the internet i think you know i think we all have experienced the upside there is some downside though people are going to take unwarranted shots from places that you know do not call for the credibility for them to take unwarranted shots that is the internet but all anybody says is you know you guys haven't won anything yet but everybody we talked to over in that building you've been together you've been there for three years we talked to poyer a lot we obviously got a chance to chat with josh before hide digs everybody we talked to it's like we know we haven't done anything, but you have a championship quality over there. How do you all just continue to buy in and believe? Is it because of the culture that McDermott and them have built? And how much ownership do you guys take over that? Yeah, I mean, it's the culture that McDermott built. It's the guys we have around from the coaching staff. I mean, you can you can take it all the way to the cafeteria people. I mean, everybody is great in this building. We have a, we have a great staff. We have a great team. We have great players, great leaders. Um, and this guy's definitely that, you know, that I look up to and trust. And I feel like we built that trust and we built this – this team to be great and we know we can be great it's just things that we we control that you know will stop us from getting where we want to go what's it like practicing against that defense especially like back in training camp when you guys may have done some more ones on ones like we see what your d line can do we have vaughn on the show vaughn is unbelievable absolute game record but the secondary from like top to bottom your defense is just first class i would imagine that kind of it definitely helps you but also a lot of the young guys too that come into that offense and realize early on like okay this is for real like our I got to be good every single day, not just game day. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be able to have such – to go against such great players, I mean, the competition is like no other week in and week out. I mean, we – again, we're preparing for the game on Sunday, but, you know, Monday through Friday, th that's the work day. And Sunday, you know, it turns into a party because, you know, we're so used to going against the best of the best that we have on our defense. So, again, it makes Sunday a lot easier. Pat? Hey, do you – uh you play cards over there, Gabe? You a card player? I heard you guys play yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah. We play we, we play Blu-ray. We play Texas Hold'em. Really? How are you? You a good player? Are you a good player? Blu-ray, yeah. Blu-ray, I'd I be taking – I'd take some people's chains. Texas Hold'em, uh, we just kind of started it out. So I'm actually getting a table and everything for the house. Just bought a 75-inch TV for the room. We're getting the whole – Yeah. We're getting the whole poker room You got to dedicate some up. time to yeah. that. Yeah. You hey, bring in a dealer? It. Bringing in a dealer? Bringing in a dealer, oh. yeah, yeah. I got to stop having Put that person on the payroll for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, you definitely got to pay them, yeah. I mean, they, they, yeah, they can rake. That's right. Yeah, Ty yeah, Schmidt. Uh, Gabe, Ty Schmidt has something for you. Diehard football fan, really fan of all sports, yeah, actually. Thank you for that tremendous <laughs> intro, AJ. <laughs> no problem. Whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dave, uh, we talked to Stefan, you know, uh, earlier in the season and, and asked about the offense and how, you know, with Dable leaving, obviously you guys really haven't had any growing pains. You're scoring a bunch of points. You're beating the shit out of teams. And Ken Dorsey was around and heavily involved with the offense last year. But was there any, like, sense of worry or just, like, not knowing how things were going to be different with him sliding in being the offensive coordinator this year? Or have, have you guys kind of just hit the ground running with him? No, man. Uh, Dorsey, as you guys can see, is a great offensive mind. But also you just look into, you know, his past and what he done it when he was at Miami and, and, and those things. So, again, you have a quarterback, you know, calling the plays and um, helping Josh be able to, to – give him the most opportunity to give him plays that are, he's the most comfortable with. And, and that's a guy that we can trust, a guy that played the game, you know, played it at a high level, and now is, you know, upstairs calling the shots. Uh, Connor, what's up? You have something for Gabe? Yeah, also a massive sports fan. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> uh, Gabe, Pat does a segment with NFL Films, uh, Big Brain Football, and one of them they highlighted uh, you and Stefan Diggs talking on the sideline of the Rams game. How often does that happen where you guys see something on the field and then kind of utilize that later on in the game when you need a big play? You're talking oh, about yeah. Jalen squatting. You're talking about Jalen squatting yeah. and looking and then the go route at the end there. That was an awesome clip, by the yep, way. Yep. Need more of that. Yeah, man. I mean, we, we 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 caught him. We caught him flat-footed on the backside when uh, seventeen was looking the other way. So we kind of made the adjustment and said, and seventeen told fourteen, just keep running no matter what. And that's what he did. And we were able to make that play. But we're always evaluating, even when we're out there running routes and and doing the things that we do. Even on run plays, we can figure out uh, some things that we could kind of get open on and uh, what's the op what where the openings are at and be able to adjust and make big plays like we did, um, uh, L.A. Does your the offense you guys are in, like, and especially with Josh Allen, how good he is? Do you guys have uh, a lot of freedom when you're running routes, like to have option routes where you get to you can sit down, you can break in, break out, depending on the coverage you're getting? Do they? I would assume the the longer you're there and the better you guys play, the more and more they trust you and you kind of opens things up. Yeah, of course, uh, we have a lot of plays where we have uh, a lot of options and stuff to be able to run what we want to run. But the the best thing is being on the same page and. A lot, a lot of the times we make the right decision, that, and we're both kind of with one mind. I mean, those big posts that I'm able to take, there's also other options I can do as well. How do you get there? How do you get to that point? Because that's not easy to be on the same page as the quarterback and seeing something at the same time when everyone's running 28 miles an hour. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, it's just constant repetition, constant repetition, and learning defenses and knowing where the holes are at. You know, I mean, if you know it's cover two, and we have a we have a certain play, we know that we can run a curl, and then Josh knows that once he sees that, he should know that I'm doing that. He should have the trust in me to know that Gabe's going to run the right the the right route here in this certain coverage, and that's what we're able to do. Yeah, it's a sophisticated offense. I got a chance to watch it whenever Peyton and the boys were rolling at the beginning of my career, and it was like I was. I didn't know anything about football at that stage of my life, but I was like lucky to be in a couple conversations. And I was like, oh, I'm going to figure out how to fucking play offense in the NFL. <laughs> and then, you know, I would like listen in to the things that were being said. And it was like against this one coverage, it could be four different, it could be four different fucking plays out of nowhere. It's like, well, how does anybody stop that? How, how does anybody, how does anybody learn it? And how does anybody stop it? And it's because the continuity is a big deal for that type of offense, right? Isn't that a huge deal, I think? Oh, yeah, of course. And it's just, again, like I said, I can't harp on the reps that we took to be able to get there. I mean, the, so many mistakes that happened in practice to be able to get us ready um, to kind of learn what we what the route was, how we could run against certain defenses, and then just being on the same page. And that's the chemistry, and that's the confidence, that's the trust that we all have in each other. Do you come out of college uh, Gabe, like that, Gabe? Like, is that something that you can come out of college and have that, like, instant rapport? Or does it take years? Um, I mean, yeah, I did a lot of that too at UCF. Uh, the last two years I was there, uh, Hypo had us running uh, similar stuff to what we do now. Um, so I was kind of used to playing, uh, running those choice roles. So basically having choices in, in all my routes. Okay. Tell me, excuse me. Can you, I have two questions for you if that's okay, AJ. First of all, I, I should have done the research here. So you were with Hypo at UCF. Hypo here yeah. in Tennessee. I'm sitting on their campus right now because of him, basically, and what they've yeah. instituted with Hooker. What is it about his offense you think that makes it so successful in the college level, Gabe? It's it's fast. Um, well, for, I know when I was there, it was it was a fast offense. I think it's the same uh, shit. I think it's the same shit. Different so yeah, guys. If this, I think. Yeah, if it's this, if it's the same shit, it's a fast offense. You're staying on one side of the football, and literally all your routes, you have options. You have to make a decision based on what you see out there. And if you let the guys play free and do what they want to do, guys are going to get open because that's that's what we do. So you were literally prepared to be an NFL wide receiver. That's amazing to hear because that doesn't happen in yeah. college. I don't think. Gabe. I trust. think that's an anomaly. Yeah. It, yeah. The only the only yeah the thing the thing that kind of 
the thing that kind of that that kind of hurt me was uh, we had really wide splits to help in the run game. So um, I know that was one thing that that kind of hindered me a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was running choice uh, choice routes all the way through college, and um, actually, Dave's even asked me about it uh, three years ago when we brought it into the offense about what we used to run at UCF. So I'm I'm really the the mastermind behind all of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll say that tomorrow. I'll make sure everybody knows that. Uh, my last yeah. question for you about your time at the Bills. So, Stephon Diggs. He scores a touchdown. He punts the ball. Shout out to Stefan. He's a great punter. I told him that I would donate $25,000 to any charity he wanted if he's able to punt the ball to the top level. Mm. Yeah, he got It has to be a big time punt. Like he has to go ahead and murder that thing. We're donating a bunch of money to Von Miller's charity because he's become a weekly uh, interview with us, conversation with us. It was halted there for a second. Halted mm. there for a second, but it is oh. all the way. It is all the yeah. way back. Is there anything? Uh, just think for the next time we have you on. Uh, we'll do something. And Jordan Poyer, we're donating a million dollars if he breaks the uh, interception safety record yeah. uh, on this season. If he gets 12 interceptions, which would be the record for NFL safeties, I'm donating a million dollars because it's never been done before. So, like, if, if you want to think of something, we would love to get in the game, and we'd love to do so because we appreciate your time. And speaking of appreciating, how is the Bills Mafia just as a Bills? We ask everybody because I like hearing every single player talk about it because this isn't normal. That isn't what every fan base is like. And not every single fucking player loves the fan base. Normally, there's players that hate the fan base, actually, because of what they say about some of the players. And then you hear some guys that covered up. Feels like in Buffalo, team and fan base synonymously love each other. Is that is that's accurate? And it's because of how much they give? And how do you like the Bildo situation? <laughs> Oh, win. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Win, win lose, or draw, um, they're on our side. And Bills Mafia, again, you know, they when they, when they, I think they won the best fan base um, in the NFL last year or something. Like that. And it is true. It stands true. You know, this they live, they live, sleep, and, and breathe football here. Um, and I know, I remember when we came back, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs game last year from the playoffs that we had lost. I mean, we pull up on uh, to the airport and we get out. I mean, there's, hundreds you know probably a thousand fans out there uh supporting us and, and, and cheering for us getting off that plane and you know that's how much they love us and they know the time and the effort and the sacrifice that we put into this game and nothing but love and respect for the, them out there hey gabe. hey gabe last thing here hold on hold on aj oh, you yeah. get another 85 yard or longer touchdown Ooh. okay as you were giving your answer i was thinking 85 yeah. yard or longer okay because it very rarely happens you're one of the only people that's doing it at this point We'll give eighty five thousand dollars to a uh, some foundation that you want to you would like to give. Give it to, it to the to the Gabe Davis uh, bank account foundation. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll, we'll match, no, we'll no, match no. a donation to your bank account and <laughs> to a foundation. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely I got it. Yeah, for sure, we can get a foundation for sure. Oh man, hey, awesome. don't be scared to punt that one if you get in. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. That, that the money's kind of the money ain't as long enough to be able to be punting balls. It's that, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. get like fined or something for some crazy. Oh yeah, you heard get, a fan. You could find more too. I'm sure each time you do it. But last I question for me, and then punt. Okay, before you, before <laughs> you uh, go, are the buildos a situation? Are they still going on, or do they? Did COVID cut those things out? Are they still throwing them on the field. <laughs> I actually wish I would have saw them throw it on the field. I would try to stick it on my helmet. <laughs> that would have you know, like been, been the best. If Diggs punts one and it gets into the stands, then, then I'm donating 25K to his charity. So <laughs> he's got to pick one up and punt it too. Yeah, I think they do it. What do they do? The Patriots game? I think they always do it. The Patriots game. They okay. always go and do it. Oh, it's only for a specific, like a specific Oh, we're getting game? more information. Yeah, like, we're getting more. That. Yeah, like big old. 12 inch. Hell yeah. yeah. Double oh, headers, yeah. probably. Really? <laughs> why, why the Patriots? <laughs> oh, no. They, yeah, we hate, they hate the Patriots. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Fair enough. All right. We know what, Gabe? We appreciate your time so much, man. Thank you so much for coming on here and being so open and fun and teaching us about your team and your offense. It's just uh, good luck this weekend, too, man. It's, it's really fun to watch you play. Hell yeah, man. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. Thanks, Gabe man. Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Gabe! Gabe! Yeah. Man, he's awesome. God. Yeah, beast. Is it, Pat, did you know the, the Bildos are, like, specific for the Patriots? No, well, I was real excited. I actually said, well, we're learning stuff. Because we bring out the Bildos, what, with every Bills player that we talk to. I, I think know. it, was, it wasn't was until not? the third Von Miller conversation that we hadn't we didn't bring up a Bildo to him. Uh -huh. right? We were able to just have a full conversation <laughs> because it's pretty unique. You know, the when the fan base that wins the best fan base in the NFL also has a potential finishing move, you know, that's, like, that's cool. That's cool to know what their finisher is. 
and I guess it's for the big bad wolf of the AFC East. Connor, does that make you feel good or bad that the double-headed yeah. buildos are only available for your game when you come to town? Uh, it makes me feel great. That means, you know, it means more to them to beat the Patriots, and it means it's, you know, the one that they circle on their schedule. If the Patriots are the buildo game, that means, you know, we still have real estate in their big old domes up there. But I respect the, respect the Bills fans. Respect Bills, Ma Bills Mafia. What they do is unbelievable.